As MPs flee Westminster for their summer holidays, one man will be left behind pouring over polls and that infamous news grid. He's Linton Crosby and he's the advisor paid to propel David Cameron back into number 10 in 2015. Like Labour's Peter Mandelson and Alistair Campbell, he's widely seen as the Tory party's sinister eminence who even controls who's up and who's down in the cabinet. So has he become too powerful? Allegra Stratton has been finding out. You always play to win, you don't play to come second. The smirk is attitude. The smirk is, he is a person who says he can get away with this. Well, I'm no genius, I'm just a ordinary person who wanted to help the Conservative Party. If for some reason you'd like to see the most powerful people in the Tory party, then on a Monday morning at about 8am, come down to this street corner and you'll see loads of them streaming out of this building. It's their campaign headquarters and up to Whitehall and Downing Street and the Prime Minister's lair where they will have a planning meeting for the week. But actually, nine months out from a general election, they're on a war footing. One of their number is head of their general election campaign, Linton Crosby. To many people, he's the most powerful person in the Tory party. Tory communication chief Craig Oliver got in trouble for getting Crosby into Downing Street. But since arriving two years ago, he's been kept close. Whenever David Cameron's in trouble, he brings Crosby to reassure restive MPs. They know Crosby is a winner. Thrusting immigration into the campaign glare has been attributed to Australian election strategist Linton Crosby. He notched up a whopping four victories for Australian John Howard, and certainly the boss was grateful. Uh, briefly, but very sincerely, um, I can't let the opportunity of Linton's report go by without recording my immense personal gratitude to you, Linton. But it also got pretty nasty. The Indonesian ferry carrying the asylum seekers was intercepted by the Australian Navy. At the time, the Prime Minister John Howard said those on board threw children into the sea to try to force the Navy to pick them up. Yes, he did run campaigns for John Howard that were largely uh, or significantly fear-based. They were trying to, to worry people about the fact that there was this um, asylum seeker and, and illegal immigration problem going on and John Howard would determine who comes to this country and under what circumstances. But there's a lot of unfair stuff thrown at Linton um, about the, the dog whistling and the racism. You will read here that oh, you know, this is part of Crosbyism. Well, it, it wasn't. It was John Howard, the Prime Minister at the time, and his Defence Minister, Peter Reith, who actually said those things. In 2005, he came to work in the UK for another Howard, Michael Howard, and he went hard on immigration again. The, the theory is that you somehow put out these messages that people can't generally hear, but the people who need to hear them pick them up and respond and vote your way. So they're not issues that you talk about in the Openly, broad. Yeah. But, hey, everyone knew that Michael Howard and the Conservatives were focusing on immigration and crime and all of these things. No one could say that they were trying to secretly, you know, below the line, through phone calls or direct mail letters, address an issue that they were trying to hide from the rest of the voters. The Tory vote share went up in that election, but they still lost. Polling would later show that the country wanted a crackdown on immigration, just not from the Conservatives. Morning, Linton. Unlucky in 05, things picked up on getting Boris Johnson elected in 2008 and 2012. Boris is a very loyal member of the team and he's a good member to have. Immigration took a back seat. Instead, they promised to cut commuting costs and crime for the outer suburbs. Linton Crosby doesn't appear to run cookie-cutter candidates, which brings us to 2015 and how he's going to run David Cameron. Linton Crosby is fond of the sayings of this man, General Slim, whose statue is not far away from Downing Street. Slim said, in battle, things are rarely as good or as bad as the first reports of excited men would have them. I can tell you firsthand that Linton Crosby detests the breathless ups and downs of Westminster gossip. Instead, he gets his politicians to focus on three or four core messages and rams them home over months and months, and preferably years and years. Sources of mine who have dared to deviate from those messages know about it. They get rung up for the Linton Crosby hairdryer treatment. It doesn't sound like a hugely profound insight, but you would be amazed 
How many British politicians find it difficult to stick to the script? Scrape barnacles off the boat, Crosby told David Cameron, stuff impeding the smooth sailing of the Tory ship. The energetic health secretary, Jeremy Hunt, is always trying to announce new ideas on health, but he's stopped by the iron grip of Crosby. But the biggest barnacle of all, Michael Gove. Crosby showed the Prime Minister polling indicating the Education Secretary was so unpopular it could have been an electoral barnacle. The PM moved Gove and the Chancellor remonstrated but lost, indicating Crosby trumps the Chancellor right now. Every strategist would love to be able to come to a political party and say they've got a silver bullet for all their problems. Um, they don't. What they have are the techniques and mechanisms for first consolidating the vote and second trying to grow the pool. That's what you try to do is grow the pool of voters who potentially might listen to you. That is obviously the advice that Linton is giving uh, to the Tories. Try to grow the pool on the right uh, by finding policies to, preach, to, to, to appeal to the defectors, to UKIP. Find some policies which, which appeal to women voters. It's 2.30 and we've seen a steady stream of Tories into this building today, even though it's the summer holidays. Linton Crosby is still running a tight ship. Every day he's in from 6 through till late at night. Instead of his own office tucked away to the side, he sits in the thick of things alongside junior staffers and interns alike. It's one of the reasons he's so well regarded. He has few airs and graces. It's from this building that Linton Crosby is controlling the Tory message. If at the last election there were four different characters who had four different takes on how the Tories were fighting that election, this time round there will be just one. In the words of one of my sources, Linton Crosby's word is the law. Economic competence, immigration, welfare reform, Crosby's messages next year, but too heavy on immigration and ethnic minority voters will be frightened off the Tories. Too harsh on welfare won't help them with the north of Britain. Right now, the PM is on holiday. Linton Crosby isn't, however, taking a break. For a few weeks at least, he really is in charge. Here to discuss Crosby's influence are the former London Mayor Ken Livingstone and the Conservative activist and Times columnist Tim Montgomery. Tim, if I could start with you, there you have it. Allegra says that the Chancellor was overruled by Linton Crosby and as a result of polling, uh, mm. Michael Gove was demoted. That's no way to run a government, is it? Well, I think it's probably true, um, but the reason why David Cameron is listening to Linton Crosby is because partly you have the reason there in Ken Livingstone. Ken Livingstone was the... Uh, Tories couldn't defeat Tony Blair. Uh, Ken Livingstone did. He was uh, one whopping majorities in London. But it was Linton Crosby's strategy, with a little help from a man called Boris Johnson, that unseated Ken. In Australia, Linton Crosby helped John Howard to four victories. And it's, it's that campaigning now, it's that ability to run a campaign, organise it properly, to understand opinion polls, to understand the public. That's why the Conservatives are willing to, but isn't there, but to isn't, hire him and to listen to But him. there's a paradox here, isn't there, which is that all the evidence shows that one of the reasons politicians are so unpopular is people think they don't show leadership, that it's all about spin and polling. Mm. I mean, isn't it just part of the whole eating away at confidence in politicians that are actually powerless and they're just run essentially by the ad men? Well, look, we say we like conviction politicians, but when politicians do things that we don't like them to do, we don't necessarily respect them. But opinion polls are our way, in a way, of voting between elections, telling politicians what we think about issues. Sometimes it's wise for politicians to listen to that. Sometimes it's wise when Ken Livingstone ignored certain people's views on congestion charge and plough ahead. But opinion polls do matter in between elections and Linton Crosby is a very good interpreter of them. I mean, Ken, you don't like Linton Crosby. I think you think of him as a sort of evil person as I understand it. But isn't that just because he got you defeated? Well, no, no. He, he, he was incredibly well, successful. Yeah, he's, in, he's most likely the most successful propagandist since Dr. Joseph Goebbels. Right? <laughs> Oh. I'm, not, I'm not really <laughs> suggesting for one minute they're in the same league. But they've got one thing in common. It's about fear. And that's what's so demeaning about what Crosby's done to our politics. When I came into politics, elections were debates about issues. Now it's smear, fear. And what we should have in the next nine months is an endless debate about how you're going to turn our economy around, where our economy is going in the future. 
Crosby's going to do everything possible to stop that. It'll be a focus on immigration, benefit cheats, strong trade unions. It's not true, Ken. All if you look that. at the long-term economic plan that every Tory spokesperson has to use day in, day out, that's very much Linton Crosby's argument. He's actually arguing but he's not for the honest. Conservatives to focus on the economic issues, but, he's not, but not just immigration and welfare. he's not being welfare. honest about that. That's our problem. No, the simple reality is now we've had 30 years of neoliberal economics under Thatcher and continued by Tony Blair, it hasn't worked. We are worse but off the issue than we here is, But surely the issue here is, 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 a, is a different one. I mean, we recently had the leader of the Labour Party, mm. Ed Miliband, saying mm. that he's going to back away from image building mm. and spin. But let's be clear, they've just you know, hired uh, David mm. Axelrod from America, the mm. Lib Dems have their own South African... Yeah, I mean, the game's but, up, isn't it? The, I mean, government is now run by spin and pollsters. I mean, I think that was... One of the weaknesses of New Labour, they forgot the actual core issues about what you pandered to. But do you have you any confidence that Ed Miliband is going to be different? Because when I'm, whenever I've been with Ed Miliband, he's talking about issues. He's, what do we learn from the success of the German economy? He's never obsessed by this sort of spin nonsense. And the key thing, you look at the people he's appointed, they're people who organise and mobilise activists, not what you pander to in terms David of the David He's appointed well, which is, just just point. a, exactly. yeah, an American yeah, campaign advisor the, at a lot of money but the key, that's paid for by Labour but the, key the idea that Ed Miliband Clinton, is very different is The key nonsense. thing about Clinton is he built a machine. And that's what I tried to do. I couldn't defeat um, Boris. But we built a machine that actually mobilised a lot of people across London, got them out on party, not quite enough to win. But in a situation where Ed Miliband faces what I face, a completely hostile media, that's the core. Build that machine, reach people on the doorstep. Well, I think this debate is going to run all the way to next <laughs> May, and it'll be jolly interesting to see what it does to the overall turnout. I'm not sure people are terribly enthused by the turnout. Of we these. And we all win. But let's just remember the real <laughs> we'll smear we'll tonight see. was I, yours I, with I've Joseph Goebel, not I've by Linton Crosby.